guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Reading Bear, and I hope you are ready for some more stories. And today, we'll take a look at some new entitled people content. If you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and post some bear emojis in the comment. And now, let's dive right into the stories. The first story is titled. Neighbor phones police because Mill is parked across the road from their driveway. So, this literally just happened. For some background, I live in a council estate in the UK. If you've ever been in one, then you'll know we're all jammed in here like sardines especially when it comes to parking with most of it being roadside. They're not bad places to live, but if you have more than one car chances or you'll be parking it on the roof. Anyway, we have a mix of bought houses among us mere commoners. One such fancy pants lives across the road and a couple of houses up, complete with their own two-car driveway. Posh, I know. Well, me and my partner have recently had a baby so my mill has been coming by a lot more for visits as you can imagine. Usually, she parks outside our home on the road like we do. But as we're not kings of the road, sometimes those spaces aren't available. So, she parked partially across the road from the aforementioned fuckwits driveway. This is in no way illegal and pretty much every house in our street with a drive has a car parked across the road with no issues. Not these folks, oh my lordy. We've had several notes left on her car with passive aggressive messages such as we will try not to hit your car and if you have no road awareness you probably don't know that what you're doing is illegal, so I suggest you move now, always signed your fed up neighbors. We've tried to explain to them that it's not illegal to park across the road and also that if they simply just came to the door and asked we would move as soon as it was possible. But nah, they started petty. So, the saga continued. Well, milady of the driveway came to my home, banging on the door like the police with an arrest warrant. Scared the pants off our little girl, who I had to then take to the door screaming her pants off, only to be comforted by more screaming from our friendly neighborhood correspondents. My mill was not having it and came to the door to tell her to do one because of her attitude, stating that she could have just asked nicely instead of yelling at a mum and her baby who have nothing to do with it. This resulted in a tirade of threats from the old T-Watt bags. Long story short, she screamed that she was phoning the police and we would be fined or arrested for parking on her property. Someone should have probably told them that their property barrier doesn't include public roads opposite the property. I can't wait for the police to get here and see that parking across her drive actually meant being parked at the opposite side of the road. So fellow road users, according to our charming neighbors about half of the UK population better move their cars before the popo come and getcha. Thanks for listening to my rant, I know it's only parking but my god. The entitlement. Update. To summarize, my mill parked across the road from my neighbor's driveway. They started losing their minds as they believed it to be their property. This led to some shouting and of course a call to the boys in blue. So, as you can probably guess. Yes, the driveway overlords did indeed phone the police. After her threats, we waited around waiting for my mill to be shipped away to the big house for committing the ultimate crime. Parking on a public street. I know, please try to hold judgment. However, like most close-knit streets, our other neighbors came out to see what all the fuss was about and oh did we get the gossip. It turns out we aren't the only people she's complained about. Social caretakers for the elderly, visitors for other houses, council workers and even people who live on the street have all received notes and stern warnings from our delightful neighbors about our property. Although we were the lucky ones who finally pushed them over the edge. Well, they finally arrived. We can see their house from our window, so it was prime viewing. Milady of the driveway came running out of the house clutching a mug of what I can only guess is the tears of orphaned children. They went into her house and closed the door and so we waited. Praying, hoping that they would come across to get our side of the story. Well, our wish was granted. But let me tell you, it was so much sweeter than we could have imagined. After watching the officer poking his head out the door like a meerkat trying to figure out where the car was that was blocking their driveway, she gave him a hand and pointed to my MIL's car parked across the street. This poor fella looked more confused than a drunk with a calculator. He eventually went back inside before heading over to our house and that's where the real fun began. He came to our door, and we greeted him with a customary hi, what can we do for you officer? Here is the following conversation from what I can remember. Officer. Good morning, we received a complaint about a car from this property blocking a driveway. Mill. 
Hey there, yeah, we've been expecting you. Officer. Are you the resident here? Mill. No, my son and Dill are but it's my car that's been reported. The silver one across the street from their house. Officer. So, I'm having trouble understanding the issue. Was your car parked across their driveway? Mill. Nope, it's been parked in the same space since I got here. Officer. Well, your neighbor is claiming you blocked their car in their drive and were trespassing. Mill. Oh, we know. She's been leaving notes on my cars and others in the street. She's been claiming that entire section of the road is part of her personal driveway. You can ask the other neighbors. Officer. What notes? Has she asked you to move? Me. Kind of, she told us and the rest of the neighbors that they would try not to hit our cars. Officer. What do you mean? Me. She's been accusing us all of parking in her driveway, across the street from her house on the public road. I even have a photo of where the car was parked a few hours ago. I showed him the photo making sure to point out the time and date it was taken, and he just shook his head. He asked if there was anything else he should know before dealing with the matter. We were more than happy to fill him in on how she came to my door to stamp her feet in disapproval. Throwing all the aggressively condescending it's illegal, sweethearts she could our way. He asked if we felt threatened, I said no but I wasn't happy that she was yelling at me while holding my baby. He said he understood, and we encouraged him to talk to the neighbors to get a full picture of what's going on. So, that's exactly what he did and Jesus, Mary and the wee donkey, it was all so much worse than I thought. For them. In our street news travels fast, we're gossipy little shites. We even have our own street WhatsApp group. Yeah, I know it's kind of sad but we're all friends. Lockdown really brought up together. The officer did in fact make his way down the doors, and they were all more than happy to grasp them in after all their griping. It turned out that not only had they been harassing other people for parking near their home, but they had also been witnessed exiting the car looking a little wobbly. Wobbly as in three sheets to the wind drunk as a fart. One can only assume this is why he needs 20 plus feet to reverse into his drive. His wife, the lady of the driveway and pain in my ass, has been spreading rumors that other people were having affairs. Such as the gay teenager up the street having it on with a middle-aged mother of three next door to him. However, the pièce de résistance was revealed to us when the officer came back to our house to wrap up. When the officer asked about our trespassing on her property, she told the police officer I trained my cat to shite in her plant pots. My huge, fluffy and attitude-fueled kitty had been having his morning poop in her begonias. His name is Stanford, and he is renowned in our street for being a sassy little dickhead, sitting on top of cars, sneaking into people's houses and sleeping on their beds and of course, tormenting dogs. I have never been prouder of him. In the end, the officer went back to her house and from what we can tell told her to stop being a FUD and if they were caught drunk driving they would be arrested. Any more notes are coming to people doors and they could be charged with harassment due to the volume and nature of the events. Essentially, they were told to get a grip and the officer went off to attend to actual crimes. Now the neighbor parks across the street from his driveway in protest and the rest of the street accommodates by parking directly in front and behind him. As is our right by law. Get it right up ye, ba bags. I hope my cat held eye contact while he was pooping on your plants. Disclaimer. I would just to clarify, I did not train Stanford to do his pooping in her pots. She just thinks I did because why else would be doing it other than being a total legend. Love this cat. He gets me. The next story is titled. Should I block my mean neighbor's shed door with a new fence? There's been an ongoing situation between our neighbors and ourselves. They keep encroaching onto our property by adding a small tree that is 50% on our property and they've built a shed directly on the property line that opens in such a way that they have to step onto our property to get into it. It opens over the line. They've been cutting the grass way over the line for a while as well. About 10 feet over the line. It keeps becoming more as time goes on. When my son, 16 at the time, politely asked them to stop mowing our side, they proceeded to yell at him and curse him out in front of my other child who's eight and has special needs. After a few minutes, my spouse came outside to see what was up. They turned on him and attempted to bait him into a fight. Keep in mind, he is also disabled and walks with a cane. They were saying things like, why don't you come over here and say that? And I'll beat the crap out of you. All my spouse was doing was asking them to stop cursing around our children. Keep in mind that my children are still present. My spouse eventually just made the children come back inside to de-escalate the situation. 
Another time, they were having a yard sale and were telling people it was all right to park on my lawn. I asked the visiting couple nicely if they would mind moving their car and all hell broke loose. After, the woman neighbor started shouting at me for a few minutes and calling me names. I felt threatened so decided to call the cops to have a paper trail of the harassment. Since this incident, they've started throwing dip cans and soda bottles filled with urine onto our property. They also let their dogs poo anywhere they want. The question. We've decided to build a fence in the hope that this will be the end of it. However, should I be the harbinger of karma and build the fence right on the property line? They would have to move their shed and their tree. I feel like it's being petty, but they've just been horrible neighbors. They won't even let me walk my dog past their house. They've demanded that I cross the street. Should I be nice, or should I bring them the karma I believe they deserve? Update. Apparently, seeing the markers in the lawn from the surveyor made the neighbors change their attitude. While walking my dog this evening, the male neighbor stopped me and asked if he could talk with me for a second. I thought here it comes, but I was wrong. He apologized, a lot, for everything, and he said he just wants us all to be neighborly. Felt like the twilight zone. What I'm thinking though is that he saw that his shed was flush with the line and knew I could make him move it. Thank you all for the great advice. I'm still going to look at surveillance equipment though. It's just a good idea in general. The next story is titled. Using my parking space? All good, you will be using it forever. So, I'm living in Japan now and here people ride bicycles a lot. You can't leave your bike anywhere and you have to pay for parking, between $1 and $2 per day. There are very few free parking areas for bicycles. Most people leave their bikes at the same place, so they pay monthly because it's cheaper and you have your own space. This started a couple of weeks ago. Someone in my building started having a guest who decided to steal my bicycle parking space whenever they came to visit. Sometimes they stayed the whole night so I had to go to the station, pay $1 and come all the way home walking, which meant I would need to walk to the station the next day, getting up earlier, walk like 20 minutes to the station while carrying my heavy bag. All the bicycle spaces have a number, which means they are reserved for someone. Mine is the 105 but this ducker decided to take mine whenever they came to visit. The second time this happened, I told the building manager, but they didn't do anything. The third time I saw the bicycle there, it was the same red expensive bicycle. I left a note in Japanese saying please don't leave your bicycle here, this is my space, and I am using every day. I found the note taped, with the tape I used to tape it on their bike, to my parking space and it had a couple of bad words in Japanese at the end. Basically, he was not only stealing my space but making fun of me by insulting me. Fine, it's just fine. I probably wouldn't have done anything about it if he hadn't written those words, this triggered me and got the worst in me. This person did it again a couple of times, so I knew this would continue. I was thinking about buying another bicycle, a better more expensive one I could use to go on cycling trips, so a good chain slash luck was needed anyway. I bought one of the thickest they had at the store and decided to try its efficiency. I locked his bicycle next time I saw it there. It hasn't moved for the last seven days. There were two notes, the first one was a very aggressive one, with more bad words and threats about going to the police, which I don't care, let's go that way buddy. Second note days later was an apology and they begged for me to unlock the bike because they tried to break it, but they couldn't. I guess he has learned his lesson. I'm pretty sure he won't do it again, but I just want to enjoy this feeling of victory a couple of days more. I will free it in two to three days, I guess. Edit. In order to keep my name out of any legal issues I changed parking lots, it is not as close as this one, but I could come back in a month or two, and I would be getting a new space so it would be okay. I left a tiny and very discreet note saying I will free his bicycle in exchange of $100. I wanted to ask for more but probably he wouldn't pay it. I wrote tape the bill under the seat. I will wait a couple of weeks, if he doesn't pay I will take it out at night, as far as possible from the place, steal his seat, cut the brakes and tires and all the other small pieces I can get or destroy. I can't steal the bike and dump her somewhere else because he locked it so I would need to carry it. The lock I got is the thickest and one of the most expensive in the bicycle shop. You can't cut it with normal tools because the thing is as thick as my finger. I'm pretty sure you need some kind of industrial tools to cut it. It would be easier to cut the parking device because the metal is thinner there. The last story is titled. Ma'am, you can't be parking in the loading zone. So, I ended up ruining someone's day a while back all over a little sign that reads no parking, loading zone 0800 to 1700, Monday to Friday. 
I was delivering to a larger mixed retail strip mall in a Toronto suburb. The place doesn't have a rear delivery area so by design there is blocked off areas on the side of the complex to allow delivery vehicles, garbage, and couriers access to unload during the day. The place also has a medical center next door, that medical center charges for parking, the strip mall doesn't. So enterprising cheap people will park and walk over, even though a multitude of signs prohibiting the practice are plastered all over the lot. So, the complication is that loading area is closest to the medical arts building, has parking lines laid down but assigned no parking, loading zone 0800 to 1700, Monday to Friday. Dozens of cube trucks use this lot daily for their needs, however it's not often that a full-sized semi, me, has to use it. I need every inch of that lot to position properly so that I can get the freight off and on my merry way. Often I'll arrive and there is a single car or two occupying a space, they are a bother but can be negotiated around easily. On this morning I am rolling into the lot when a full-sized Escalade pulls in behind me, and parks right beside the loading ramp in the one spot that absolutely ruins my approach, there is literally 50 spots in the loading zone to choose, and like 500 spots in the actual parking lot. I rolled down my window and motioned I need to use the ramp, now most self-aware self-conscious people would get the hint. Nope Mrs. Self-Important decided that she's parked, y'all can deal, unloads her booger eaters into the stroller and obviously ignores me as I'm protesting her parking choice. My parting shot. Great example you are setting for your kids lady, earned me some shade and a casual obscured middle finger salute. Fine then, I have nothing but time on my hands, rushing around and in a hurry, I can solve that for you. Called the towing number on the sign, says they're less than an hour out. Then called my store contact who spotted my reversing, he also called the towing company to complain, with an extra pair of eyes I placed my truck inches from her back bumper, snapped a couple cell pics for liability coverage and started unloading. Then karma came calling, self-addressed to Mrs. Self-Important. A compactor garbage truck came through to empty out the mall's bins a little over to the right of Mrs. Self-Important parking spot. After some eye rolls from the garbage truck driver, the empty bin miraculously managed to end up blocking her only path of escape after my tight squeeze parking. Oh, crap she's hemmed in now. So, I got a crew of guys unloading me, we're all anxious knowing the shit is gonna hit the fan. Finally, the fruits of our labor ripen. The tow truck arrives, looks at the situation we've created and is nothing but laughs, he's snapping pictures of the mess. He dollies the wheels of the Escalade and slides it perfectly out and onto his flatbed, 10 minutes and he's gone. Security arrived during the tow out and remained. Sure enough 90 minutes after leaving Mrs. Self-Important is returning from the medical center Rugrats in tow. Goes from zero to righteous nuclear indignation in an instant, demands to know where her car is. One of the guys unloading me hollers oh the one blocking the ramp, it's towed. Her phone is out in an instant videoing us claiming harassment, theft, damages. She's on 911 in a flash accusing the us of stealing her car. Security quickly intervened and in the most professionally condescending tone possible explained the signs, the tow-away loading zone, and the contact for the company who towed it, the region's finest in blue show up and take over. I give a quick statement and the officers basically says ah a civil matter. She ends up relenting defeated, and a taxi is called, I wrap up unloading my truck under her murderous stare. So, I'm rolling out and, on my way, I get a text from my dispatcher you stealing people's cars now? Thanks for listening.